Let me release you from this imperfect flesh that ties you to time and space. All that is unknown will be known to you once more. Happy New Year. Um, welcome to my lair. It's basically just a room that I cleaned and then put all of my stuff into. So with New Year's come resolutions, of course, and one of mine is to be perhaps slightly less crass. If I should choose to swear, because I'm not saying I won't, it will be for emphasis. It will be at a very well-placed, epic, fucking, oops, the Phantasm Blu-ray box set. My buddy Jack gave me this. He wound up being my secret Santa, which was just like super fortuitous. It's just super for fortuitous. And the thing that I love about it is that each of the Blu-ray has like their own, like the original cover, you know, Phantasm. And I love the tagline, if this one doesn't scare you, you're already dead. And then Phantasm 2, it's this summer the ball is back. It's like they're just so cheesy, but in the best possible way. I also hear that there's a cool documentary on here on Phantasm Oblivion, which is one of my favorite sequels. But for this video, Phantasm 3, Lord of the Dead. Phantasm 3 was hands down the campiest addition to the series. You you watch the first Phantasm, it's, it has humorous parts in it, but like the undertone is really creepy. And there's something about Phantasm 2 that didn't quite maintain that and I really think it was the absence of a Michael Baldwin because he's he's just Mike I mean no offense to James LaGrosse from the second one like I mean he was a good leading male hero He had the you know homemade flamethrower and that was cool, but he didn't feel like Mike This brought back a Michael Baldwin as a really kind of side role at this point because it picks up exactly where the second one leaves off and there there's wreckage, the hearse is destroyed, and there's flames everywhere, and you see uh, like a killer midget monk, and it's like doing something. Killer midget monk turns around, it's been gnawing on the severed head of, I almost swore, on the severed head of the chick from Phantasm 2. I mean, they spent the whole of the second movie kind of building that up, so you're sort of like, oh, well, okay, I, I mean, I guess that's that. And I really think that, that was due to budgetary restrictions because Phantasm 3, I don't even think it went to theaters. I don't even think it was minimally released. I think it was direct to video. So the budget was a lot low. And I kind of liked that because it forced Don Coscarelli to sort of, you know, try and get, get back to that feeling of Phantasm. Now, amidst all this, there is some crazy, crazy stuff. Like, there's this chick, Rocky, who has nunchucks. She's just this post-apocalyptic survivor, and she has nunchucks. And she even goes up against, like, a silver sphere and just, pink like, knocks it stupid. And then they got uh, Tim, this little kid who basically witnessed the death of both of his parents. And actually, the, the backstory on him is pretty creepy. That's that whole sequence with his mom in the, in the hearse with the corpse of the father. That was pretty creepy. I'll give Don Coscarelli that. And you would think that something like that would be like really kind of depressing and really dark, but it's not. It's campy as all hell. This kid is like a marksman because his dad was like the sheriff of their town. He's just got his father's gun belt around his shoulder like a sling all the time and it's just always got ammunition. It's so campy and that's kind of why I love it. None of the Phantasm movies are realistic in any way. And even if you go with the theme of the first one, an oblivion, it's, it's sort of like it's all a dream anyway, or could be a dream, or what is reality, or how many realities are there? You know, that's what's great about Phantasm, because its scope is just so broad, it's like, this this is insane. At any rate, A. Michael Baldwin's back. My biggest legitimate complaint about this movie, I don't mind how corny the zombies were and stuff like that, my biggest legitimate complaint is the fact that, yes, they brought back A. Michael Baldwin, but they kind of made him almost like the damsel in distress. He was just always in peril, and the other characters had to go and save him. It, this is still an awesome movie. I, tr I truthfully love all of the Phantasm movies. Each one is its own experience, and that's pretty amazing to me. This movie was campy, it was goofy, but it was also kind of a return to form. It set the stage for Phantasm Oblivion, which was my favorite sequel. And for that, I love this movie. Plus it just has some beautifully memorable moments, like when the tall man's hands turn into those like little 
almost did it again. Those little like cricket monster things with like the side blades and it's like, and one of them crawls up Reg's pant leg and he's, and he's like, no, no. And as it gets like closer to his balls, he's like looking at Rocky and he's like, I got this, I got this. And she just takes like the knife and stabs the thing through his pants. And Reg just lets out the most like effeminate scream. <laughs> like, oh, 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 it was like a yodel. It was, oh, it's it's classic. It's classic. I, I, I absolutely love each and every single one of these movies. And Phantasm Three was a very, very, very welcome addition. All right, guys. Well, I hope uh, the beginning of the new year continues going well for you. I, I mean, I really do. Like, it's this was a pretty chill Christmas. I think everybody needed it, honestly. I think everybody's like, all right, we need to just stop being jerks to one another. Just, goose frog. Hey, that's a good movie. I should review that. What's up, Jeffy Cat? Oh, P.S. Because I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. Bill Thornberry. Hello, Mike's older brother. First person to drive the Hemi Cuda in the Phantasm franchise returns in this movie with a new secret. Ooh.